Hi, I'm Zane Lamprey. In this episode, I go three sheets to Venice, where I make a new friend, I become acquainted with an old friend, and I befriend a rat with wings. His name is Steve. Hello, Steve. I see you brought... Steve? It's a good show. Steve! Every night, in every city around the world, it happens. People pour into local watering holes to, well, drink. It's my mission, that's me, to traverse the globe, getting to know these different people and their drinking customs. Bellying up to the bar, and with any luck, making some new friends. Can you come with me? Where am I going? Outside. Warning, if you go drinking in Venice, you might end up doing dumpster runs. But I told you I would pay for the drinks. You work for me. I work for you. Right, go. You'll see more of that later, but first... Venice, the city of water, the queen of the Adriatic, and the place where guys in stripy shirts and funny hats sing while they use a stick to push you around in a canoe. But I'm not here for the cheesy, overpriced tourist draft. I'm on a mission to experience the drinks that define the region. I'll explore the distant foothills of the Italian Alps. And its sparkling namesake. Prosecco. Prosecco. Prosecco, OK. Yeah. I'll find out what distinguishes Prosecco from Champagne. I'll learn the difference between Spumante and Frizzante. And after unraveling the mysteries of this mountain-born bubbly, I'll penetrate the famed walls of the ancient city of Venice, where a quaint look into past Venetian drinking traditions... Zero there. Yeah, what does that mean? ...morphs into a full-tilt, head-on collision with the present. Yay! Yay! It's a drinking scene that cannot be imitated anywhere else on Earth. Would a real man really drink a spritz? Sweet guys. Really drink sweet drinks. If I eat this, am I a real man? Fuck it the puss. And Come out. Right, is this guy gonna kick my ass? No, I never, I never leave you alone. Find out when I go three sheets to Venice. Oh, my little mangy friend. But before the chaos of the city, I take you to Valdo Biadene and the region of Veneto. This area and nearby Conegliano are known for the production of the world's best Prosecco grapes and therefore real Prosecco wines, which are white, notably dry, sometimes still, but more often, bubbly. E this is Francesco, but everybody calls him Checo, and he's famous in these parts for his wines. Brand name, Col Vettoras. Of all of the Prosecco here in this, this area, this is the best. That's what I'm told. And I think you believe the same. Remember this? <laughs> yes. I know what you're thinking. Another champagne knockoff. But I went to Champagne. I know Champagne is the mother of all bubbly, and I give big ups to that. But it's time to recognize Prosecco for what it is. Time to compare. Champagne relies on any combination of three grapes. Pinot Meunier, Pinot Noir, and Chardonnay. Prosecco must be at least 85% Prosecco grape, and no more than 15% Verdizzo, Pereira, Prosecco Long, or Bianchetta grapes. All from Canegliano or Valdo Biadene. Champagne goes through second fermentation in the bottle, which means it develops a lot of its character after bottling. This is why so many people pay big bucks for old bottles of champagne. Prosecco goes through its second fermentation in a tank, which means that it develops most of its character before bottling. This is why people often drink Prosecco young rather than aged. Champagne connoisseurs are very opposed to mixing champagne with juice, as is done by less refined Americans drinking mimosas. Yeehaw! But in Venice, there is no shame in mixing Prosecco. Just add peach puree, and you have yourself a signature Venetian favorite known as a Bellini. So there you have it. Champagne, the gold standard amongst bubblies. And Prosecco, a unique offspring worthy of distinction. I'd say the world's big enough for both of them. Make some room. But 
If you want to experience real Prosecco for yourself, buyer beware, there are imposters out there. Prosecco is a grape that originates from here, yet sometimes people plant it elsewhere, and then they still call it Prosecco, when in fact it's not real Prosecco because it didn't grow with the same climate, it didn't grow with the same land, the same water, so it's not real Prosecco. Yeah. To ensure you're getting authentic Prosecco, read the label. It should say it's from Canegliano or Valdobbiadene. And it should have an ICRF number certifying its authenticity. Finery? Yes. No. Fabrication. Oh, that's your that's your no. number. Questo. Okay. Grazie. Prego. Now this is what hosting a drinking show is all about. Yes. Ah, I like it. I like it a lot. I like it. The only way to finish off a day like this is with the perfect Venetian dinner. So I head out to the Ristorante Al Giardinetto. The world shakes when I am drunk. I'm in the right place. Oh, apparently, my world's about to shake because out comes more Prosecco. There you go. No more, I'm riding. Buena, there you go. Yeah, that'll do just fine. I've already had Prosecco Spumante <laughs> from Valdo Biadene. This is Prosecco Frizzante from Conegliano. What's the difference? Frizzante is slightly less bubbly than Spumante, and Conegliano is the other official Prosecco making area, known for equally high quality Prosecco. It's good. It's very good. Speaking That's of good, good. We're, not, we're now open. Judging from the crowd, I'm guessing the food here is top notch too. Time to see what the fuss is all about. Yes? They're letting me make gnocchi. It's a potato -y pasta kind of a thing. Oh my goodness. This almost feels inappropriate. <laughs> How for you? You might not know this, but one of my favorite beers comes from Italy. Is it Moretti? Of course it is. Is it a Moretti? I'd know that dry, crisp, refreshing taste anywhere. Okay. okay. As for the food, yeah. hopefully I don't ruin the recipe. Ow! Ow! What? You ever call it ganache? As a joke? Why would you? Did you see that I dropped one? You got my fired? Ladies and gentlemen, the kitchen stylings of Mr. Zane Lamprey. <laughs> Who's a good cook? Who's a good cook? This is so good, it makes me start speaking Italian. Ferrari. Lamborghini. Italy. I like it. And so I reached the end of the perfect day. I'm gonna let you have that. I'm gonna give it to you, because you're a friend of mine. That's it. Grazie. There you go. Yeah, the perfect day. Prosecco in the hills. Moretti emits the appetizing scent of Venetian cooking, an apron, plastic gloves, and a guy in a tux watching it all go down. Salute, salute. Now I have to prepare myself for the sharp contrast tomorrow will bring. Coming up, I enter the walls of Venice to find out about a strange drinking custom called the Giro di Ombra. Who knows what the Giro di Ombra is? Who does? And to see if real men really do drink spritzes and kiss each other. I kiss again. Yeah. When you're done. Day two of my Venetian excursion. I've been to the countryside. Salute. Salute. I've basked in the glory of Prosecco in the foothills of the Alps. And now I'm on the verge of a totally different experience. The ancient city of Venice. A labyrinth of corridors, canals, and colossal walls, where the only way to survive is with a map, a lot of money, and a high tolerance for tourists. But I will not be deterred. I'm in search of a truly Venetian drinking experience. And I'm told that as the host of a drinking show, I absolutely must feature something called the Giro di Ombra. 
Supposedly, it's some kind of Venetian drinking custom that's been around for centuries. So I need a bar that's been around for centuries. Mm, all right, that'll do the trick. See? So, okay, do you guys know, how old is this place? What year was it open? 1462. 1462. Before the discovery of America. Wow. Wait a second. Hold on. Those don't sound like Venetian accents. You guys are from Australia? Yes. I can tell. That's not surprising, considering the fact that at any given time, the average population of Venice is 20% locals, 80% outsiders. Yeehaw! But enough factoids. Let's drink. Who knows what the Giro de Ombre is? Who does? You know. Okay. So. Wait, hold on. What's up with all these glasses? What did I just do? Buy the round? I just bought a round for the house. Here's what just happened. The bartender had me buy a round yeah. for the house the because the Giro di Ombra is a tradition where a group of friends go from bar to bar uh, yeah. drinking wine. He can't do it alone, so he decided okay. I need to befriend some of his customers. It was actually a mistake, but please, but please enjoy. Once we start getting friendly, they tell me that food is also a big part of the Giro di Ombra. You need to have a chiquetta. Chiquetta. A chiquetta, which would be one of these little snacks. Yes. And all the bars in Venice, not in Rome, not in Milano, not anywhere else, just in Venice. Okay. Have these little chiquetta. So what should I eat? This woman has some strong opinions on the matter. I'm gonna call her Octopus Lady. And I have Octopus, a... I have always said, if you find me lying out in the street and you don't know whether I'm alive or dead, yeah. wave an octopus under my nose. And if I don't move, I'm dead. Can you ask him for do, is it to do it? Octopus. Octopus. Do it! I get the pussy. Oh, right. It didn't come out quite right. Can I have two, uh... Do, do it, it pulpit. Do it pulpit, yeah. Okay, so we've had our eight glasses of wine. I've had my eight-legged snack. Give me, give me a hand pound for that one. You're, not, you, you, you're dialed in to what I'm trying to accomplish. But I didn't come to Venice to hang out with Australians and Americans. Thank you. I need to talk to a real Venetian. Salute! Salute! All right. Someone whose veins course with a Venetian party instead. Buonissimo. <laughs> Someone who can tell it to me like it is. The bloody king good. Whoa! I must be psychic because near the famed Rialto Bridge stands El Pesador. Owned and operated by Mr. Venice himself, Nicola. Nicola! Nicola! This yeah. guy is a wealth of cool information. You want to put a monkey on my shoulder? Oh, come Check on. Check this out. We say, we say in Venice, yeah. you have a monkey yeah. on the shoulder. What does that mean? Because you are pista. Tu sei ubriaco. You have a monkey there. Wait a second. Are you telling me you have that a monkey on your shoulder? Drunk, you say you got a monkey on your exactly. shoulder? Exactly. We say, tu hai una scimmia. You have a monkey. Dude, that's awesome. And familiar. Remember the beer bath in the Czech Republic? But when you have a hangover in the Czech, they call it mom o pizzi which means I had to, literally to have a monkey. If I come home with a monkey, it means I came home drunk. Exactly. That's awesome. Hmm. Awesome. European monkeys That's must awesome. drink a lot. Where is Plepius anyway? Anyway, okay, back to business. Remember the whole Giro de Ombra thing? It translates literally into Journey of Shadows. And Nicola has a story about how this uniquely Venetian wine drinking custom came to be known as a journey of shadows. Ombra means shadow. Okay. So, in San Marco Square, there is a big tower. Okay. We call it Campanile. Okay. So the people used to go around when the shadow moved it. Yeah. They start drinking because the, the wine have to be fresh. So originally what, it, what you did was they just moved wine what? with the, the shadow, shadow. Yeah, shadow so it stays cool yeah so we, we we start calling ombra so there you have it the venetians call their wines shadows because people go around the shadow. the shadow yeah but the truth is the giro de ombra is more of a past tradition done during daylight hours it's less common these days, and Nicola wants me to quit focusing on the past and tune into the current realities of Venetian nightlife. So everybody drinks spritz now. If Nicola tells me it's spritz time in Venice, bring on a spritz. Okay.
white wine. White wine with an orange and an olive. Is that cool? And then he said, uh, Aperol. Aperol is Italian sweet liqueur flavored with orange, rhubarb, uh, and a bit of ginger. Hey, that's what Gilligan had, had, a bit of ginger. <laughs> <laughs> After the liqueur comes the spritz. Now you put a little soda water in there. Yeah, no, don't do it! Now, that that fresh. Was fun. <laughs> Time to drink. Cheers, mate. Wow. Wow, well, you can. That's you interesting. Can what? <laughs> okay, guys. I know what you're thinking. Kind of foo foo. But you know what? That's how they roll in Venice. So just relax already. <laughs> Here's the thing about these drinks. It's very, very drinkable. They go down. They go down pretty no, it's fast. It's not so strong. It's not so light. It's like a medium. Right. Okay. They are good. And as I gain a greater appreciation for Nicola's world, I try to help him understand my world. You want to see what Steve looks like? Sure, sure. Look. Hi, Steve. Yeah. How's it going, man? Hello. How nice are you? Nice to meet you. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> may I kiss you? Yeah. Ah, my goodness. Oh, uh, come He's on. He's in Italy. And now like this. No, in Italy, Venice. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I get it. In Venice, real men drink spritzes and kiss. Get over it. It's a Venetian thing. But the next thing Nicola shares with me seems more like a Miami thing. He's a Where, Stefano Gavazzi. I know, but I want to know what happened to Tufts because you went on to do, do Nash Bridges, but then Christopher Michael Thomas, whatever his name is, he didn't do anything. Don Johnson. Don Johnson. What, what, do you drink? what do you drink? He says he likes a bitter spritz. All right, haven't had that one yet. So back to the bar for some more mixology. That good? No, come on, more, more, more. Here, Campari, a bitter liqueur flavored with orange peel and herbs, is added to white wine. You see their color, you see the color. Top it off with the carbonated stuff. Oh, no, stop it! And behold, the bitter spritz. Time to taste. Hey, is he spritz blocking me? Why, I oughta. That's <laughs> <laughs> ah, bitter, huh? No, no, no. You like, which the, one do you like? Ah, uh, the first one. Yeah, the, the first sweet one. one. Because I told you. Because I'm a sweet one. You're you sweet. too. Because you love Aperol. Right, and Don Johnson is Don bitter. Johnson like a bitter because it's a strong one. Well, he might, he might be bitter about Nash Bridges. I don't know. It's been a good night, but just when it seems like I've had it all, I open a Pandora's box. Uh, what did I not drink that I need to try in Venice? Grappa. 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 Coming up, will Grappa be my undoing? Now, he's finished that. Plus, find out why I'm twirling foolishly amidst pigeons in the center of town. <laughs> I'm in Venice, at El Pasador, with owner Nicola. Don't touch it! Hey! You don't have it out. I'm a grabbing the meatball! <laughs> wait, wait. Nicola is about to serve me some grappa. What grappa you like? Eh? You tell me. What? What's I have all the best? things. What's... Moscato, Chardonnay, Mamarone Barricato, Nero Davola, Pinot Grigio, Cabernet Franc, and Prosecco. What no, is that? What? Uh, what's, what's grappa? Grappa. They're doing it with the wine. They make grapes. alcohol with yeah, wine. Yeah, the grapes. You know what I like is for the uh, the professor. Hello, Zane. Right here, buddy. Yeah, yes, professor. Explain it. No problem. Thank you. Most alcohol scholars agree that grappa was first developed in the wine regions outside of Venice. Thrifty winemakers would keep the stems and unused skins left behind from the winemaking process to create a high-proof poor man's spirit that came to be known as grappa. Today, there are still cheaply made grappas, but there are also much more sophisticated, high-quality grappas that use actual grapes rather than the stems. These grappas are believed to be smoother and more sophisticated. In other words, this ain't your grandpa's grappa. <laughs> Back to you, Zane. Thanks, Professor. Now. Back at the bar, Nicola uses traditional grappa drinking glasses. You just fill to the top of the round part. 
Unless, of course, you're trying to get the host of a drinking show drunk. This wine's yours. Uh, don't f me like that. She killed me. Now, he's finished. Salute. Chichin, guys. <laughs> Just one shot. Nicolo, I would like to experience the flavor and the burning in my, in my oh, esophagus. Yeah, right now. Yeah. All right, time to dust it off. It's finished. Uh, you know what it tastes like? New car. Come on, Dan Johnson. That's it. Wow. I started with the wine. If I could swear on TV, I'd say that's good. Then came the spritz. Sweet guys. Sweet drinks, sweet drinks. And now, the ultimate Venetian fire water. All thanks to Nicola. I may. He gave me a wealth of knowledge and a buzz. Ah, bellissimo! Apparently, I owe him one. Outside. <laughs> you gotta work. Can you, yeah, work can you come? Huh? Because it's working here. But I told you I would pay for the drinks. Just wait. Wait a second. Because this, did you drink? Yeah. In my place? Yeah. Did you pay? I didn't pay. You want to pay? I got to take the garbage out. Right, so right. now you're working with me. Okay. You, you're working for me. I work for you. All right, go. Where? On the top. Well, good one. Perfect. Now I'm cool? Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Nicola, the f pleasure was all mine. Unfortunately, the next morning might not be so good. Red wine, white wine, spritzes, and grappa could prove to be a lethal combination. Oh, man. The best part of my job is not the hangover. It's actually making new friends, like I did last night. And it's also being reunited with old friends. And I broke, I broke rule number one. I left a friend behind. I left a friend in the Czech Republic. I left him soaking in a tub of beer. His name is Pleplius. And he's been returned to me in Venice by the mail. And, and this is him. How are you, sir? Well, I'm sorry about that. But you know what? We're going to have some fun. You need a bath. <laughs> Right there, which is that, right there. What a trip. Yeah, a cappuccino after it's all said and done would have been nice. But how can it compare to a reunion with the official Three Sheets mascot, Leaplius? Big ups to the Chodavar Brewery in the Czech Republic for retrieving my man down. And big ups to Venice for a drinking experience that could only be had here. From the provincial to the palatial, from the traditional to the contemporary. Now's the time of whispering. Ah, oh, come on! No, stop it! Venice, a great place to have a monkey. I did something like this with little Susie Benjamin at band camp. Uh, my job is to drink. You see? You see what I'm trying to do? Yeah. Ah, uh, come on. Come on, tell me. If I drink, you drink. Yeah. If I say monkey, you drink too. 
Well, kind of. Just it's a who, bit. It's whoever sees the If I say monkey. Steve, uh, I don't know Steve anyway. Hi, Steve. Nobody likes a dirty monkey. Uh, yeah.